This is Chats with Ryan Trainer from Tassie Bush Ranger and it's PJ from Addicted to Grow and welcome. Hey PJ, how you going tonight? Hey Ryan, how you doing, mate? It's yeah, good. To thanks. Be here again. Um, so uh, yeah, this week I thought I might ask you a few questions about your business, Addicted to Grow. Uh, so straight off the bat, I guess what is Addicted to Grow currently, and then we'll talk about. Yep. And then we'll talk about. It after then we'll talk about where it evolved from. Sorry, yeah, and then we'll we'll talk about where it came from from there. Cool. Okay, so addicted to grow. Um, current situation is it's about mental health. So, so what I'm doing specifically right now is I go door to door or I cold call businesses and I talk to them about you know a 30 minute free presentation on how we can help staff members and me specifically as the external expert, to come in and to talk about mental health and to talk about how my programs can help change the way how people think. Not what they think, but how they think, the, the thought process that goes in behind it. That is the actual current um, you know, uh, stepping stone for Addicted to Grow as it grows into its mission, which is to be the worldwide um, phrase of personal development. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So, uh, so you do one-on-one -on -one stuff as well though, as well as business. Yeah. Yep. So I do, I do one-on-one -on -one and I, uh, do all of it by the internet now. Um, I still am allowed to have one-on-one -on -one clients in the studio with a 1.5 meter distance. Um, and one of the things that I really enjoy doing with, um, mental health clients is, um, 10 hour long interventions, which is, yeah really breaking down to the root cause of some of the things that, you know, they, they holding against themselves. Yeah. Yeah. 10 hours is a long time, but I guess if you're digging into some deep stuff, it takes that long to get into all that, doesn't it? And what it, yeah, it, it does. And it also, um, the biggest thing is, is it wears out someone's conscious mind. So majority of where the unconscious is, is like, hiding all their stories they tell themselves and all the you know the worst thing that they can make up about themselves it's it's all hiding in the unconscious mind and the conscious mind keeps telling you that that's why it's hidden there right so the conscious mind is like your ego and, and it keeps you there so you know like if you you didn't get enough sleep and then you start talking to yourself in this mind frame, right? That's your conscious thoughts, right? With all this unconscious background from maybe past experiences where, you know, you self-sabotaged yourself in the past about not being good enough at training and things. And then you hold it against yourself. And that 10 hour long period um, of talking and, you know, it's, it's not talking the whole time, but it's consistent questions that really wears out the conscious mind from trying to be the ego sitting on this shop older going i'm not gonna let him win you know like because it's all ego based yeah 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 right that's interesting i guess uh we yeah we hide stuff even from ourselves i guess don't we over time we sh we sure do yep yeah um so addicted to grow obviously the name itself i really love it and i think it's somewhat self-explanatory um is that did the name come to you at the beginning with the idea or is it something you had to sort of form over time? Okay. So if we go back to when I started at um, the Telstra shop, so I got my first um, real job outside of school back in 1999. I got a job working for the Telstra shop. Um, the Telstra shop um, is a, the Telstra shop was quite a little, was quite a little uh, store in Goulburn and there was never, there never used to be any mobile phones. Um, they had like self, um, um, the bag phones, they had bag phones, right? Yeah. So as the store like evolved over time, then they brought in analog phones, the big ones, the really huge ones with the red numbers on them. And yeah. then they progressed obviously then into CDMA. Um, and then they project progressed then into, um, uh, uh, what are they called? Then they progressed into digital 
digital phones, um, and then they progress then into screen phones, like like touch screens. So yeah. when I was there, one of the biggest things that I really enjoyed was fixing the phones. Like I'm quite you know fiddling with my fingers, and I like to use my you know and everything in my brain, and I, I start to really you know concentrate on how this works and what makes this and how can I get parts and fix it. So I started to repair phones, right? And, and yeah. this backstory is for a reason. So then I wanted to create a business on the side as a repair shop because there was no repair shop in Goulburn, right? Goulburn was a little town. So then what I did was I started to create a business name and at the time it was called Addicted to Sell. Now for two reasons, right? It was addicted to sell because of obviously cell phones and it was addicted also to, um, it was also addicted to, come on, come in then. This is part of having a home business, Ryan. So that's it. Come on, come in. Come on then. Come and sit here. Come and sit here. Okay, come and sit down and say hello to everyone then. So this is Leo. This is my littlest one. Hey, Leo. So, so what I then decided to do was I, you know, I went down the track of creating this business name called Addicted to Sell because I really enjoyed selling as well, right? So I really enjoyed the process of selling because someone, you know, wanted something and I had a solution. And so I really enjoyed the process of getting to know someone and then selling. I've got a 20 year career in selling, right? So then after the Telstra shop, what happened was I got to a point where I was like, oh, you know, I don't really want to do this anymore. And I, and I, kind of had, I had their business name to the side and I was like, oh, I don't really want to do this. And what happened was because I stuck it to the side and I still paid for like this little amount for Addicted to Sell, it then grew, um, I became a personal trainer. And one of the things that I really loved doing was like building muscle. And then I started to understand the process of, you know, building muscle, you know, getting healthy, being fit and being strong. So then um, from there, I had, you know, Addicted to Sell was the business name at the time. Um, I changed it to Addicted to Grow. And at first, Addicted to Grow was my idea about helping people to grow, as in muscle growth and Physical, physically yeah. grow. And, and then, yeah, physically grow, right? So that's where it, that's where it really started. Uh, and then it evolved, obviously, like th three years ago is really when it took off, right? And then it really evolved into where I am now, which is, you know, addicted to grow now, which is all about like mental health. And it wouldn't have got this far if I didn't really start to have a passion for wellness coaching and coaching clients through that even growing muscle, it was deeper than just, you know, building muscle. It was about having the mind yeah. frame and the mindset to go, well, I've got to stick to this diet. I've got to go to the gym every day. I've got to try different exercise. I've got to do this and I've got to do that. So that's, that's, really, where, um, that's really where Addicted to Grow is right now. Yeah. I go yeah, right. to the mental health side. Yeah. Um, yeah, how you say that really it was, even when it was about the physical, it was about the mental side of the physical, which uh, I think is a really big thing with training people sort of, don't necessarily think about that the, the mindset and the willpower that all goes into that physical training. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So do you still do some PT stuff? You're yeah, so there, I still right? call it coaching is because I that's right, it'll come back. So one of the one of the reasons why I call it coaching is is, um, is because when I got my wellness coaching certificate, there was a real big um, ask in the area of, you know, that mental health side as well as the physical. So then I started to portray myself as a coach. So I still coach one, two, three, four, five, five every two days. So I've got Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I coach five people still. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm. Um, so that's, sort of already covered one of my next questions of <laughs> whether you just like, I know you listen to Gary V and I do as well. And one thing he talks a lot about is uh, 
starting off on your passion, working from seven at night till two in the morning until it picks up enough to drop the day job. Is that something you were doing to build it up or did you throw yourself in the deep end, so to speak? I actually threw myself in the deep end. I opened the business with 10 bucks in my pocket. Yeah. 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 So I, so I had all of my equipment I had because I already had my own gym. So I already had my own gym. Um, I was working in the car industry at the time. My wife was, I, we had two kids under the age of three at home. My wife was really stuck and she was doing the best that she could. And it got to a point where I was just like, you know what? I'm sick of selling cars 12 hours a day. I was a manager and I started to really focus on, well, maybe I could have a home business. And then we threw up some ideas. I already had the business name in the background. I just never actually put it out to market. So yeah, just this one day, I just made this decision. I said, I'm just going to open the gym. And I think there's still, like if I go back to Facebook now, the, 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 the post would still be there from three years ago from just saying like, here it is, I'm opening a business. The dungeon is the gym name. So yeah. the business name is Addicted to Grow and, the, and the, the gym name is the dungeon. Yeah, that's awesome. I love how you just took that leap of faith and uh, went for it. And so obviously social media was the way you got the word out there and marketed the gym. Yeah, so social media was a big part of it for me. Three years ago, um, quite frankly, I started to monitor, actually longer, I started to monitor how social media works because I was still working as a car salesman. So we started to really dig into social media and the platforms on how we could obviously gain more you know, prospects to obviously sell more cars to. So I had a bit of an understanding and my biggest uh, area of you know, social presence was, yes, social media. And what I also did was because... I was already, you know, born and bred in Goulburn my whole life. That that set like a really good fundamental grounding for and the foundation for really, you know, going around to people and saying, well, you know what my skill set is. You know that I look after myself in the gym. You know that I do this. You know that I do that. You know, if you want a really good dedicated trainer, like I'm here. So it really stemmed from there. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, I've been uh, sort of similar lately and just fascinated by social media. And uh, just the opportunities that it gives us. Um, I mean, how we met obviously through social media and that wouldn't have happened yeah. at all as a example. And just how you can learn through YouTube, um, really digging into it at the moment. It's, uh, it's great that you can just start a business, as you said, with $10. Whereas in the past, your advertising would have cost you ridiculous amounts just to get your name out there. So. Uh, yeah, I think there's negatives about the internet, but I love the opportunities it creates if you focus on the positives. Yes. I think one thing that I want to add with that is I think what you said there about opening a business right now with social media is like such an opportunity. Um, everything is free. Everything that you need to literally open a business is free. You can go and get a business name and, it, and it, like you can just put the business name on hold. It'll cost you nothing, right? You can get a website. You can, you can use Gmail. You can use like, you can work out, you can use um, your Facebook and promoting pages where you don't actually have to put money down and you can still market your page with promotions without dollars. So there is so much of this stuff for free. You can get Zoom which is free you know you can start having interviews with people purely by just going hey i want to interview you just just so i can pick up my skills like all of this stuff to create a business is so free and it's so available at any time that you can literally open a business and a business page on facebook you know using free apps like canva pick collage you can literally open a business in like seven minutes mm, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah there's no excuse really it's just the time isn't it you just got to yeah. dedicate to it. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously just you at the minute. Am I right in saying that? Yes. I'm, I'm currently looking into maybe next week. There might be one more. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm so, look, uh, looking into an admin. I'm looking into an admin overseas um, because obviously that's, you know, for me, that's the best thing to do is to have an admin who's overseas it's cheap. Um, 
they got their, their work dedication is at such a high level and, yeah. and the information that I can shoot to them and share all my, you know, drives and everything with them. It's, it's just simple and easy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I like the idea of, I guess, being your own boss and being only accountable to you. Uh, myself, I have only worked really the one job my whole adult life. Um, oh, wow. So it's, um, yeah, it's obviously very different from anything I've done. Uh, so the other question I wanted to ask is what's something you know now that you've learned in this time or a few things that you didn't know at the start that you really wished you knew for anyone else starting out? It's so much easier than you think. If I knew that when I started, like it was easy for me to jump. I was just like, I'm just going to start. And then the next day I was just like, well, where do I start? It's yeah. actually so much easier than what I thought. Yeah. You know, the yeah. ABN and going through all the rigmarole and setting up the bank accounts it was, it was quite easy. You know, the best thing that I could put, the best thing that I could share with anyone that's watching this, and that is this, there is always a role model. There is always someone who has done this before you. And you just reach straight out to them. And if they don't reply, reach out to someone else, reach out to someone else, go and get these free, like there's so much free stuff, like I said before, on there's free webinars, there's free events you can attend. There's free, you know, like even Gary Vee, Russell Brunson, you know, Tony Roberts, they still put out like free PDFs and free, like even I'm starting to give away free PDFs. Like it's so easy. And I wish that I knew how easy it actually was because at the start, I actually put so much, pressure on myself to go, Oh my God, what have I done? Whereas now I look back and I just go, you know what? I knew that I was going to run into brick walls every day. I knew it, but those brick walls are actually just like so small that they're just like, okay, I can figure this out. Next step, ring someone. Oh yeah, do that. Okay, cool. And then like, it's just, it was just, it's true. There's so many obstacles along the way. It all comes down to how big you think the obstacle really is. So if that's the one thing that I've learned and it's the one thing that I could share with anyone moving forward, who's just watching this and just goes, look, I want to do this. I want to try opening my own business online. And I've got a skill that I really love. It is obviously make content, just start recording stuff, get on YouTube and record it flat out, get on zoom, start recording it, put it out into social media and, and really don't care what anyone thinks. And the next thing is it's actually so much easier than what you actually think. It's so easy. Yeah. Um, about, Hey, you're talking about obstacles. There's an audio book that I loved. It's called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. Yes. And yes, uh, yes. yeah, that's basically all about how if there's no obstacles, you're not doing anything because that's really life and learning new things is you're going to hit obstacles. Yeah. So if, if they're not there, you're doing something yeah. wrong, really. It's the obstacles that you need to be hitting and that's how you grow. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. In fact, I think... That was the very first um, self-development book that I ever listened to. And um, yeah, cool. it probably has stuck with me more than any other since, really. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, that's really good. That's, I'm going to have to, you'll have to get me that name. I'll, um, I'm trying to remember the name now. Yeah, I'll send um, you a link. Obstacles of it. it. Yeah, send, send me that. The I'd, obstacle I'd like is to read layer. it. Yep. I'll send you a obstacles link. And okay. if anyone that's watching this on YouTube, I'll throw it down in the description, a link to it for anyone else as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, really yeah, good awesome. one, Matt. Um, so you sort of briefly mentioned that the end mission is for it to be a term globally. Yes. Uh, I'm presuming that's a fair way in the future, obviously. But uh, um, <laughs> I guess... I've had... Uh, go ahead. Um, I was just going to ask, like, what's the next big move to head in that direction for you? For me, it's going to be scale. Like if I get this, if I put on um, a virtual assistant this Saturday, it's going to be a lot of, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of the content will be her looking into my stuff, looking at watching my videos, learning how I speak so that her, you know, the social media posts is still going to be very similar to the way I write them. Um, that's a really big step for me but yeah. I'm really looking forward to it because obviously, you know, that's how we grow. That's how we scale. So the scaling would be number one. And the second one would be, you know, more content, 
it's all about more content. So right now, you know, I'm upping the game. I'm doing three live videos across YouTube, Instagram, and two, two Facebook pages three times per week now. There's going to be a point where I'm just going to have to turn that into like consistent 15 minute like YouTubes a day. I'm just going to have to pick one subject, 15, 20 minutes, and I'm just going to do that every single day. And then obviously just people will start following if they resonate with the, with the content. So I think the biggest thing for me, number one, scale um, to get to the bigger picture. And number two, because once uh, this virtual assistant is overseas in Philippines. So my background is Filipino. My mother's Filipino. And the yeah. best thing about that is that if I could scale this business to grow in the Philippines, I know that the Philippines has got a very big connection with America and also Singapore. So if I get into the Philippines and I start running some businesses in the Philippines and some training sessions and some coaching sessions about mindset and how to change the way we think, what's going to happen is obviously there's going to be connections there that are going to go branch into Singapore. They're going to branch into America. So this whole idea about being global, like I've already done some international stage speeches already. Um, I've already sold merchandise into the international waters. So it's already getting there. It's just about making it, you know, Coca-Cola. Like that would just yeah. be awesome to just have people just go like, oh, you know, you do self-development. They're just, that, they're just instant word is just like, yeah, I do, I'm addicted to grow. Like yeah. this brand, literally Ryan, this brand is everyone's. It's not mine. I'm PJ. I'm PJ. This yeah. brand, I am growing for everyone to have. I'm just, I'm what they You know what? I would wear that brand, you know, because I'm addicted to growing in my running. Like it's everyone's yeah. brand. So, so that is, you know, I'm on the way. Number one, scale. Number two, up the content. Awesome. Yeah. Contents, everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's what I've sort of been working out. I mean, obviously at the minute while I'm at home all the time, there's time for content, um, yeah, plenty which of is it. great, which is great. And uh, yeah, I'm loving those videos you're doing three times a week. Thanks. I, I haven't caught Thank your you. last one yet. Actually, I've still got to <laughs> catch up on that. Um, but yeah, I love how you keep them short and to the point on topic, um, get the point across and that's it. Yep. 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 All right, cool. Uh, anything else you want to mention about addicted to grow before we finish up? Um, probably just watch this space. And if you see someone that has like a mental health issue, like if you see the content, if you see the name, if you see it come up on your Facebook feed or Instagram, like like comment and share it. It's not about me per se. It's about you guys. It's for the, yeah. it's for the communities. It's for, like you said, like when we met, it was purely because you just loved the idea that I was talking about. It wasn't me. It was the idea that you were talking, that I was talking about. And from there, that spent, that even the idea of you creating and making, you know, the, the Tassie man walk was purely community based. It was the Tassie man walk. It wasn't, it wasn't PJ's man walk. It wasn't, Tassie Bush Rangers man walk. It was like the man walk was already a thing. So it's just like, I'm just going to do one here in Tasmania. I'm going to do one here in Goulburn. Like the idea is that if you see this, share it because it's everyone's and we all need to understand just like, are you okay? It's like mental health is on the rise and, and we need to be there for each other. We stand tall together. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And uh, yeah, on social media, I think having posts like yours with the, the positivity and the good energy is really Good to see that in the newsfeed, uh, particularly times like at the minute. It's uh, good to have that positivity putting you in the right, right direction. Right. So true. All right. Well, thanks for having a chat. Uh, anyone that's watching this on my YouTube, the links to PJ's, all his socials will be in the description. So be sure to jump on there, give him the likes and the follows and check out uh, his Addicted to Grow. All right. Thanks so much for having me, Ryan. Thank you. I'll uh, talk to you again next week. Talk to you next week. All right. Cheers.